Good morning. Welcome to worship today at Nambour Wesleyan Methodist Church. It's great to have you with us. My name is Scott Lucas and I'm the pastor here at Nambour Wesleyan and it really is great to welcome you with us today. A special welcome to those at Rod Voller Centre at Burnside, McGowan Lodge and Sundale. It's great to have you with us today and my prayer is that you will be blessed today as we worship together. If you're wanting to come back to church and haven't made that move yet, wondering if we're COVID safe, we are. We have a COVID safe plan and we also have hand sanitizer and masks to use if you need to use the masks. Also, we have our contact trace register, which we keep for 56 days and then shred after that to allow for contact tracing. So again, we would love to have you back with us. We're not hugging, we're not shaking hands, we're elbow bumping. Um, and we'd love to have you with us to enjoy fellowship and worship together. But we also understand why you might be staying at home right now um, to make sure that you keep yourself out of harm's way. So wherever you are with us today, watching and worshipping, welcome to you. I'd like to share something with you, and it's something that I've been reading about this week. I want to share a story with you of one of the heroes, if not the hero, who was on the Titanic back in the early 1900s, 1912. This man's name was John Harper, and he was a godly pastor from Scotland. Wasn't supposed to be on the Titanic, was supposed to be on a ship a week earlier, but his daughter got sick and they put it back for a week. So on Sunday the 14th of April, 1912, the day when the Titanic struck the iceberg. The weather was fine, the sea was calm, and John Harper attended the church service for the passengers. His niece reported that later that afternoon, she saw her uncle speaking individually to people about their souls. It seems he was in the habit of doing that, seeking out the lost sheep wherever he went. The Titanic struck the iceberg at 11.40 p.m. on April 14. 1912. As the call was issued for passengers to vacate their cabins, Harper wrapped his daughter in a blanket, told her she would see him again one day and passed her to one of the crewmen. After watching her safely board one of the lifeboats, he removed his life jacket and he gave it to one of the other passengers. One survivor distinctly remembered him shouting, women, children and the unsaved into the lifeboats. Harper knew that believers were ready to die, but the unsaved were not. Harper then ran along the decks, pleading with people to turn to Christ. And with the ship sinking, he called upon the Titanic's orchestra to play, Nearer, my God, to thee. Gathering people around him on deck, he knelt down and with holy joy in his face, raised his arms in prayer as the ship began to lurch. He jumped into the icy waters and swam frantically for all he could reach, beseeching them to turn to the Lord Jesus and be saved. Finally, as hypothermia set in, John Harper sank beneath the waters and passed into the Lord's presence. He was 39. Four years later, a young Scotsman by the name of Aguilla Webb stood up in a meeting in Hamilton, Canada and gave the following testimony. He said, I'm a survivor of the Titanic. When I was drifting alone on a spar that awful night, the tide brought Mr. John Harper of Glasgow, also on a piece of the wreck near me. Man, he said, are you saved? No, I said, I am not. He replied, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The waves bore him away, but strange to say, brought him back a little later. And he said, are you saved now? No. I said, I cannot honestly say that I am. He began again, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And shortly after he went down and there alone in the night and with two miles of water burnt under me, I believed. I am John Harper's last convert. Apparently God wanted Webb's amazing testimony to be shared because only seven people were plucked from the icy water that night to join the survivors on the lifeboats. Webb was one of them. 
In the Hollywood movie of the Titanic, nothing was said about John Harper, but he was truly one of the great heroes of the Titanic. In the face of death and drowning, he was concerned about the souls of men. Life can be gone in the blink of an eye. Eternity is forever. We need to make sure that people know where they will spend eternity. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. He said, I am with you always unto death. What a great testimony to begin our worship today. You see, we need to help people know where they'll be spending eternity and what options they have. Especially the option of life with Jesus Christ. Eternal life. This morning... Let us be those people. Let us be like John Harper and have an urgency in us to reach out to those who don't know Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for welcoming us into the household of faith. Thank you also for the good news of Jesus that makes this possible. May we worship today with all we are, and all we have, and with every good gift and talent that you have given us, to build up your church, to exalt and glorify you, and following you by the leading of the Holy Spirit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So why don't we worship together? The first video will just keep flowing on. Uh, there's two songs we're going to worship with to begin with. The first is hymn number 348, if you're using a green hymn book, uh, a new song. It's called Standing on the Promises of God. And the second song which follows is one we learned a few weeks ago, Wonderful Grace. Let's worship together. <laughs> 